She got to get out of the way. She needs to erase that thing. What I'm saying, Okay. If you look at the race strategy, you have four areas. You have re, uh, restate. Restate means students, rest what are you going to do? You're just going to restate the question in the form of, of a topic. That's what you're going to do. Answer. After you, after you uh, restate the question, then you're going to answer the question. Okay? It says students answer all parts of the question. Okay, then the, uh, the next part, cite. It says students cite examples. So when they say you're going to cite examples, you're going to pull information from the reading that we have, okay? You're going to pull that information to cite from what you answer, okay? To kind of back up what you answer, okay? Um, last part is explain. This is the part that, is, that you will kind of do on your own. Once you cite the information, then you're going to put in your own kind of words uh, what you think, how you can expand it more, what you're trying to say, okay? Everybody understand that? <laughs> now, this is what the, uh, when you get ready to take the EOC in English, this is what it's based on. This is, a, this is what we used last year to help students to um, be able to do well on the English part of the EOC test. They have to do a writing on that test. That means you have to do an essay on that test. And this is a strategy that we use to help the students, okay, to be able to do well on that test, okay? When we look at the, um, I'm just going to read through it very quickly, okay, the article. If you look at it, I tried to pick something that was um, interesting to you, that you may get, uh, get something out of, okay? But the name of it is, What Drives Success? Everybody knows success is, right? What is success? Tell me. It's kind of like goals. Okay, if you could set goals, okay. Uh, to see me in life. Okay, what you want to do in life to succeed, okay. Okay, well success, all those things are not incorrect, what you're saying, they, don't, they are correct. All that has to do with success. So when you're trying to make success, you're accomplishing something, okay. You, it, it will start with setting goals. That's the first thing you need to do is set goals. Then once you accomplish those goals, then you have been successful, okay? So that's kind of what success, that's a kind of general idea of success. But if, we, if you look at the reading, just follow along very quickly with the reading. It says, as seemingly an American fact about America today is that some groups much more than others upward mobility and American dream are alive and well. So what they're saying is some people in the United States or in America, they're doing well. Do y'all agree with that? Mm -hmm. And some people may not be doing well, right? right? Okay. But certain ethnic, religious, and national origin groups are doing strikingly better than Americans overall. So what they're saying is some groups are doing better than the other groups. For example, they might say African Americans are not doing as well as Latinos, okay? So that's what they're saying here, okay? It said Indian Americans earn almost double the national figure. So what they're doing, and they're just going into uh, how much these different ethnic groups make on a, you know, just kind of in a nutshell, how much do they make, okay? So what they're saying is that any Americans make about $50,000. Arania, Lebanese, and Chinese Americans are also top earners, that's what they're saying. Mormons have become leaders of corporate America holding top positions in many of America's most re recognizable companies. Jewish success is the most historically fraught, so what they're saying is they're not doing as well, and, and the most broad-based, although Jews make up about 2% of the United States of the population. Now I'm going down to the next part. It said the most confronting estimation of these facts is that they are more artifacts of class, rich parents passing on advantages to their children are of the immigrants. Do y'all agree with that? 
tell me why. When we said we said most people who are rich, what they're saying is they what they have inherited or what they have, they pass it on down to their children. Do you agree with that? Yes. Okay, so that's what they're saying, okay? And that does happen. Just think of the United uh, the president we have in the United States right now, getting ready to be going to office, Donald Trump. Everybody know Donald Trump, right? Yes. Okay, he he is a billionaire. Everybody know that, right? Um, he inherited what? He got started from his father, okay? Because his father was a, a millionaire. So he inherited that from his father. So that gave him a big start. You know that? So he could be successful. A lot of people, we don't have that, do we? We don't have someone in our family, our parents, who who were um, millionaires or who were well off and that they could pass something on to us. We had to start brand new, didn't we? Okay, go on to your next page. That's what that's, that's what they're talking about on that page. Okay, so it's today's wealthy Mormon businessmen often start from humble origins. What they're saying is they are humble. Okay, many poor and poor educated, comprehensive data published by the uh, Rus Russell Sage Foundation in 2003 showed that children of Chinese, Korean, and Vietnamese immigrant experience exceptional upward mobility regardless of the parents of socioeconomic or educational background. So what they're saying is like the Chinese, Korean, Vietnamese, it did not really matter what their parents or what their parents had. They still were able to do okay. Okay? Okay, merely to say that fact that certain groups do better than others, like just like we just talked about, as measured by income. So what they're saying is, you know, you all when y'all take test scores, certain uh, groups do better better than others on test scores. Do y'all know that? Okay, what they're saying too is that um the income. The income that you have is different than other people's income. Just like what I just said, a lot of the uh, uh, rich people have inherited their income, and that's how they got. That's how they got to start becoming rich. Okay. It said there are some blacks, Hispanic groups in America that far outperform some white and Asian groups. So that's what they're saying in that situation. Um, I'm going to go on to the next, but I'm just not going to just read through all of this. I'm just going to the next page. Okay, let's go to the next page. It says, most fundamentally, groups rise and fall over time. Do y'all, do you know what they mean by that? It said, most fundamentally, groups rise. That means they rise, and then they fall. Do y'all, do y'all agree with that? Yes. Tell me why. Because, like, um, they start off by doing good. Like, mm -hmm. they have everything in check what they doing and then they get off track so they fall. Okay, that's very good, very good. Everybody understand that? That's what she just said. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can start off good and then you can get off track just like she said and then you can fall, okay? So it said the fact that groups rise and fall this way, this way punctures the whole idea of modern minorities. It said it turns out that all their diversity, the strikingly successful groups in America today share three traits. Now, this is people who are successful. This is what they say they share. They share three things. Superiority. Oh, uh, that is a deep-seated belief in their exceptionality. The second thing is they, uh, they share insecurity. Okay, the third thing is that they share is impulse control. Those are three things that they say that they share. Okay? Now, with impulse control, that means the ability to resist temptation, and the result of it is people who systematically sacrifice present gratification in pursuit of future attainment, okay? So when things come at you, when they say that you resist the temptation, that means that if you want certain things, you can say, well, I don't, I don't need that. You have a hard time doing that sometimes. That's right. But you want it, but you should say, well, I don't really need that, okay? So that's, re right? that's resisting temptation, okay? Um... Go on to the page where it says, um, where you got finally impulse control runs against the brain of contemporary culture as well. This page right here, this is what it looks like. It says, finally, impulse, it's like the second paragraph. 
Time and impulse control uh, runs against the grain of a contemporary culture as well. So it said, in isolation, I'm just jumping around in paragraph. Each of these three qualities would be insufficient. And when they say, alone, a superiority complex is a recipe for compla complacency. Mere insecurity could be crippling. Impulse control can uh, produce asceticism. Now, look at that word asceticism. I know that may be some um, didn't know exactly what that word means. So I wrote it down. It said, amount of life practices, okay? and principles, okay, those are things that you go through in life, okay. Go on to uh, that part that the Bible says needless. Needless to say, high achieving groups don't instill the closet in all their members. They don't have to. That's what they saying. they don't have to do this. They said a culture producing, say, four high achievers out of ten will attain wildly disproportionate success if the surrounding average was out of 20. So what they're saying is if you already have this embedded in you, for example, if your parents were, uh, were educated, if they had, you know, education, and they uh, value education, that means that you would do the same. Do y'all agree with that? Yes. Tell me why. You kind of, they are kind of like role models for you, right? Yes, yeah, okay. Because it's, it's another thing. It's kind of like, um, like you said, inheritance. If your parents do well, then you automatically do well. Mm -hmm. So that is a big effect on you. It does. Very good. Everybody understand what you're yes. saying? Okay. Now, it says, down at the bottom, look at the bottom. It says, each of the three traits has its own pathologies. Impulse control can undercut their ability to experience beauty, tranquility, and spontaneous joy. Insecure people feel like they're never good enough. Do you think? Do y'all think that's true? If you and you know insecurity is right, okay. That means you don't feel good, kind of what about yourself, do you? Okay. Do anybody have y'all ever feel like that? Sometimes. Tell me why. And what do you do when you feel like that? I feel like. Um, if I try to, like, if I'm doing something that I really want to do, and, like, I keep failing it, and it makes me feel bad, like, mm -hmm. I can't do it. You can't do it, right? Uh -huh. But if you have success doing it, don't you? You feel better with it, don't you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So go on to the next page. This is where we're going to be reading the like middle section. I particularly want you to look at uh, the last page. Uh, not the last page, but the, uh, this paper here says, the second paragraph says, even when it functions. Okay. Look at that. Y'all see that? Okay. okay. It said, even when it functions relatively benignly as an engine of success, the combination of these three traits, remember that those three traits that we talked about, okay, can be imprisoning precisely because of the kind of success it tends to promote. Individuals striving for material success can easily become too focused on prestige and money. Do y'all agree with that? They said too concerned with external measures of their own work. So what they're saying is a lot of times people want success just to get material things. You know material things, all right? Yes. Tell me. Like a car, house. Car, house, clothes, clothes. computers, uh, any kind of uh, things that you just like, you all like. Cell phones. We want to get a job so we can just go ahead and buy those things. Don't my cell phone. We don't. We don't look at. Um, we don't look at the things that we really, really need. Do we? No. Okay. We look at things that we really what want, don't we? Yeah. Okay. It says now. Look at the part right here. This specifically, I want you to look at. It said, "It's not easy for minority groups in America to maintain superiority complex <coughs> for most of its history." America did pretty much everything a country could do to impose a narrative inferiority on its non-white minorities, especially its black population. Over and over, African Americans have fought back against that, this narrative, but its legacy persists. It says black America is, of course, no one thing. Not one or ten or ten thousand things, or as the Port Yale professor has written. There are black families in the United States occupying every possible socioeconomic position. Y'all agree with that? So what they're saying is um, blacks have come a long way. Okay? We have a lot of blacks now in uh, different positions. 
Okay. For example, we have a what? Black principal, don't we? Of mm -hmm. a school, big, largest high school, what? In Dorothy County. We just, um, President mm -hmm. uh, Barack Obama was the what? Black, black American. American. He's the what? First mm -hmm. black president, mm -hmm. okay? They gave you an example on down. If you look at, I know you all know uh, Sean Combs. Sean Combs, right? Sean Combs. They call him, no, Sean Combs. They call him um, Puff Daddy. Puff Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, this is what he said. He said that uh, culture is never all determining. Individuals can defy the most dominant culture and write their own scripts. That's what he's saying. He said they can create a narrative of pride that reject the master narratives of their society or turn those narratives around. In any given family, an unusually strong parent, grandparent, or even teacher can instill in children every one of those three crucial uh, traits. So what he said is where you came from does not have to be how you are. Amen. Okay? So he said he came from that. He came from a project. Okay? But he overcame living as a black what person uh, who had ancestors who were what slaves okay so he he is not a multi what millionaire almost what billionaire a uh, music producer so he overcame that that's what he's saying so do not let your uh culture you know the black culture that we had where we were slaves and were all those things went went against us in history do not let that prevent you from doing what you need to do to be what Successful. Successful now. That's what he's saying. Okay. Yes. So now, with that, we're gonna look at the race strategy. Okay. I didn't go through the entire thing because we, you know, because of the time. But when you look at the race strategy, I'm getting ready to give you all the, the questions that I want you to answer. Um. Oh, no. You, got to write you can pick. Um. You can. I brought, I brought some paper. If you don't have paper, you probably don't have room to write on that paper. Pick like three questions that you can answer from what we just went over, okay? Using the first two parts of the race strategy, what I want you to do right now. So the first two parts of the race strategy would be um, restate. What you're going to do is when you restate, it's going to rewrite the question, okay? I have some paper right here. I'll get paper. You just write on that paper, okay? You're going to restate the question. Second of all, you're going to answer the question. Um, this, uh, you're going to answer the question. 
for the number two, for part two. If you can, go on to part three. Part three is where you're going to cite examples. That means you're going to pull information from the reading, okay, that we had. So you'll go to that place. You'll go to that where we were reading that part at. And you'll um, write that down, okay? Okay, the first one, I'm just going to tell you, I'll let you find it yourself. The first, like, the first question is on page, the first page. It's on the first page for you to answer the first question, okay? It's on the first page for you to answer the first question. Let me read, wait a minute, just a minute. Let me read it again. The question was, how do rich parents pass on advantages to their children? Okay. The second one you're going to answer. Now, you won't do this in a, you, you don't do, need to do one, two, three, four, five. This is going to be like in a paragraph form, okay? This is like in a paragraph form. You're really writing a paragraph, okay? That's what you're doing. Um, so you can erase that part. You say two, three, four, five. Now you're going to go into it. In the second part, you're going to say, wait, go ahead and get started. Get started. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay, but I really want you to write on your own paper because you like to write it's going to be a paragraph for that. Okay. You're going to answer that. I'm going to let you do this on your own. Answer the question, okay? Like I told you, the first question answer is on the first page, okay? So look on that first page and see what you find. It's in the last paragraph, y'all. The last paragraph is where that question is. Baby, you don't have no paper with you? Oh, I do. I just, I didn't know if you had a rare on here or not. What now? I didn't know if you had a rare on here or not. You don't have to. You get your own paper. I don't think I have it. I don't have it. Okay. 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 First part, you want to answer the question. Answer the question. I told y'all the last paragraph where you will find the first answer there. Last paragraph. Now, the part what you're looking at is, is part three. 
of that. You're gonna what you're doing, you're going to cite. That means you're gonna go back and find what you where what was in here and and put it on that sheet. You don't have to uh, and you go to where it says number three, you're going to just find where it was in the reading. It's in down in that paragraph. And that's what you're going to put, okay, to back up what you're saying. The example that you use to back up what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Did you put this part down here? Okay, you didn't start off saying. I said, how do you, you got to start off saying you got to restate the question first? You would say, rich parents pass on advantage to their children, da 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 da. Am I told you that? You're going to restate the question. That's the first thing you do. Then you answer the question, okay? Okay, once you get through with the second part, one, two, and three, go on to uh, the next question. Is that the second question? Or just pick one or the other that you want to do. Number two question I ask you, why do certain groups do better than others on test scores? Remember, have we talked about this? Remember we talked about that? Okay. So, that's, so how would you start off restating that question, somebody? Tell me. How would you start it off restating? The only thing you're going to do the first part, yes. Uh, let's say central group. You say central group do certain, uh, central group do better by starting like that? Very good. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that's what I want you to say. Okay. Certain group, but that's your second paragraph. Okay, you can finish this paragraph first. Okay, you have not finished this one because I want you to do all three of these. You're just gonna restate the question. You're gonna answer. That's fine. Now you go on to your next question. Okay, that's number two. So you're gonna restate the question. You're gonna answer the question, and then you're gonna cite. I mean, you'll pull your information from here that you find where we, we talk about that in here and put it on that sheet. That's what that means. Okay, got it now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everybody kind of got what they're supposed to be doing? Anybody else got it? Anybody need any help? Mm -hmm. Okay, you didn't pay this one. So you got three things you got to do with this question. 